iconic Canadian artist Charles Pachter finds inspiration at his lakeside retreat. Artists need visual stimuli. I knew the minute I saw it that I'd found my little piece of paradise. And for this young family, paradise is found in all things round. The most unique thing about our cottage is it's round and it's a yurt. It's fun to live in a yurt. <laughs> but for this avid fisherman and his family, the real fun began after all the hard work was done. This is our last resort because we could never go through the struggles again of trying to reconstruct anything of this nature. But it's a god fit now. I'm Charles Pachter, and this is my retreat, and these are my little duckies. Here, you, duckies. Charles Pachter is an internationally renowned Canadian contemporary artist, sculptor, and author, famous for his depictions of Queen Elizabeth, the moose, and the maple leaf flag. He's someone who clearly enjoys life's little moments and loves nothing more than escaping to his beloved lakeside cottage. This retreat is the heart of duckness. And his summer studio is an artist's dream, bathed in warm light and steps from the lake. My favorite place to paint is in the studio right here. I, it's magic for six, seven weeks of the year, and I'm away from the big city in an hour and 20 minutes. Well, like a lot of Canadian kids, uh, I grew up um, in various summer cottages around lakes that were not too far from the big city. I yearned to come back to the lake something about the gift of summer in Canada that we endure you know nine months of iffy weather and then all of a sudden we get paradise I needed to come back to this my cottage is called the ice house it's where I come to paint for nine to twelve weeks of the year and it really is my solace and my favorite place to be on the entire planet Charles calls it the Ice House because the original purpose of the house, built in the 1920s, was as a storage facility for blocks of ice. Back in the days before there were refrigerators, many of the smaller lakes um, had these depots on them. This one was called Lake Simcoe Ice and Fuel and it was famous. I've been painting for now over 50 years and for an artist, your studio is your prime experience in life. It's where you get most of your thought processes honed and where you work. Uh, for me, this place is idyllic. It's just so special. And the other selling feature was this house's proximity to the water, which makes it feel more like a boat than a building. When I first saw this place, it was like early bad Tudor Bavarian steak and burger. But the setting was unbelievable. It was right on the water. 10 feet from the water. You can't do that today. There are bylaws that require you to be set back over 60 feet from the water. The view just blew me away. Artists need visual stimuli, and this is what did it for me. I knew the minute I saw it that I'd found my little piece of paradise. Come on in. So here we are on the main floor. This was four dingy little rooms, and... The floor, which you can see, was covered in Congolium, Marbolium, and Shag Broadloom. And after taking out three layers, look what was underneath this beautiful natural wood floor. This ceiling is the original ceiling that was hidden by the false ceiling that I first saw when I bought the place. It gives the building a kind of rustic vibe, which is what makes it a real retreat. <laughs> For Pactor, the interplay of light and shadow, clouds and waves, and tall green grasses swaying in the wind is almost spiritual. This is what inspires him in his work. I am addicted to views and totally inspired just watching the change of light, the, the movement of plants and trees in the wind. Um, these are things that are, are gifts to us. And of course, all the artwork in the cottage is his, including many that feature a moose, his signature Canadian icon. I find the moose a kind of an allegory for the Canadian uh, personality. It's majestic, it's elusive, we know it's there, and when we finally do happen to 
cast our eyes on one in the wild. It's like a very special moment. Well, here we are in the lower level galleries. Many of these paintings represent different periods of my work up here over the last uh, 11 years. The type of work I do up here is very much related to the retreat. In the city, I'm working on more cutting edge stuff. But when I get up here, I'm very much influenced by the environment. The lake, the wind. This was a bowl of sunflowers. I couldn't resist. Eat your heart out Van Gogh. I had to do it as well. I know it's a cliche, but I had to do sunflowers too at least once, and I did. I called this shimmer. The Mounties, of course. The lake in August, if you look carefully, you can see four little black dots. Those are the duckies swimming in the lake. Okay, now we're coming into the studio. This is where I exult in the lighting. The lighting in this room is, in the summertime, absolutely amazing. On an August afternoon, the light is so perfect. And I love painting in my shorts and sandals, and then I, every hour, if I'm, you know, in the middle of something, I just want to say, the lake is beckoning. But what I do is I paint, I jump in the lake, I have a sandwich, I come back to the studio, it makes it very special time to paint. And that's what I do. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. How are you doing? Well, most of the time I'm up here on my own, but uh, I've taken a particular joy in my nephew and his wife and their boys are delightful and precocious and creative. They just like Uncle Charles. <laughs> so I get into a different mode where I'm playing host. And everybody's here and we've got brunch on the deck and the kids are playing in the water and, and we have a great time just catching up, uh, looking out over the lake and uh, being family. Now that I'm in my 11th summer here, it just gets better and better. I feel almost mystically close to nature when I'm here. Compared to the congestion and the pollution of the city and the concrete and all the rest of it, yes, the city has its highs and its, and its um, stimuluses and all the rest of that, but there's something about leaving that and coming to this that is pure soul cleansing. It is so, so special. There are times, I'm gonna get maudlin when I say this, Sometimes I'm sitting on a recliner looking at the sparkling water and the butterflies, uh, the monarch butterflies and the milkweed pods, and I actually come to tears. It is so stunning. And I go, this is a stolen moment that I should be really grateful for. Not everyone's cottage starts off as the dream retreat. My first reaction when you proposed a year was, you want to spend $25,000 on a tent? Now I have a yurt and I actually can't really imagine living in any other space. It really is a magical place. I'm Magnolia. I'm David. I'm Bobby. And I'm Caroline. And, and this, this is, is our, our retreat. retreat. <laughs> Carolyn Conacher and her kids get to do what most families only dream of. Spend the whole summer at the cottage. She's a teacher with summers off, and her husband Sean, a trader in the city, comes up as often as he can. And who can blame him? This is the perfect summer retreat with a big sandy beach, warm shallow water, and tucked behind the trees, a not-so-typical cottage. The most unique thing about our cottage is it's round, and it's a yurt, which we've turned into a lakeside cottage. Usually when you tell people that you live in a yurt, they say a what? A urt? A girt? Um, but then people who do know about yurts say, oh, you're the family with the yurt, because uh, there's not a lot of us. And not a lot who know what a yurt is. And if you're one of them, these round tents were originally used by Mongolian nomads as portable shelters that could withstand all kinds of weather. They consisted of a lattice wood frame, a durable cover of fabric or skins, and a hole at the top for ventilation. And today, not much has changed. So how did Carolyn and her husband, Sean, end up with a yurt for a cottage? When my husband and I were first married, uh, we were lucky enough to have this property. But unfortunately, we didn't have enough money to build the, the cottage that we really wanted. And so um, Sean started looking for alternatives. And he discovered yurts. And my first reaction when he proposed a yurt was, you want to spend $25,000 on a tent? I wasn't so sure about it in the beginning. 
But this is no tent. In fact, the results were so impressive, the couple got a three-page feature spread in a national magazine. Um, bigger and better than I ever thought it could have been. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Ten years and three kids later, the original yurt hasn't changed much. So you can see from the dome and the vinyl that it's pretty much a tent, but uh, it's a lot more attractive on the inside than it is on the outside. So this is the inside of the yurt. As you can see, it's round. That is the beauty of the yurt. So the yurt really is like a circus top tent. It has the beams that go into the dome, and then the wood that looks like a baby gate is essentially the walls. Yeah, I think I've had too many kids now. I call it a big baby gate, but as soon as you say it, everybody knows what you mean. What's impressive is how simple the engineering of the whole structure is, baby gate and all. So all of the beams and the baby gate come together with this tension wire, and every, all these large beams are resting on it. And then this is the inside shell, and then there's an outer shell. And then these large beams, of course, go down to the floor. This is what's holding the yurt up. This and a little bit of tension cable. This is the island. This is what we call the heart of the yurt, generally where all of the entertaining goes on. The wall in the middle separates um, the sort of main living space from the back room, which was once a bedroom and is now a playroom. And we've put a pantry in. The one main thing with the yurt is storage is at a minimum because there really aren't any walls to hang much on. The fireplace is great. We don't really use it a lot in the summer, but on the uh, shoulder seasons, it definitely warms the place up. It's sort of like a circus tent, so it heats up really quickly. I wish I could say that all the interiors were my design, but we did have some help from a friend who's very talented. We've done a lot of soft, um, soft muted tones of light blues and light greens. And, you know, we've been here for 10 years and all we've done is change the sofa. Um, but everything else is, is as it was. We've got the, the sweet little school desk and uh, the little tables that, you know, this has become a major card table. So, uh, for rainy days. Speaking of rainy days, turns out living in a giant tent during a rainstorm has its consequences. I would say the drawback is when we have a really big thunderstorm, no one can hear anything. So the yurt really is a vinyl tent. And so when it rains, you don't have anything to muffle the sound of the raindrops. Yell yelling at each other. <laughs> hey, pass the salt! Like, it's so funny, right? You go inside and you watch TV during the rain. <laughs> Not in our year, because you can't hear the rain. You can't hear the TV. It's ridiculous. But when the sun is shining, the number one place to be is at the beach. The most magical thing about the property is the beach. We have that great expanse of open water, and then we're nestled away in the trees in the yurt. So it's pretty magical. And it's also a magical place for kids, with endless things to do and entertainment all summer long. So what are we going to do this after? We're going to play a game of baseball. And then we can do some kayaking? Yeah, well, let's do yeah. kayaking first. Let's do kayaking first? I think for most people, the great thing about a cottage is the kids come up here and they run out the back door and they're really able to have that freedom to roam and, and to have adventures that don't involve the TV, that don't involve, you know, screens, and it's wonderful. <laughs> Ouch. And the fun comes with a few hard knocks, too. I don't think they will ever have a memory of summer that doesn't involve this beach and the yurt. And, you know, we laugh that if we were ever able to build our million-dollar dream cottage on the property, they'd, all the kids would probably still fight over the yurt. Okay, guys, I've got the towels. And they never want to get out. Okay, come on out. Okay, here we go. And at the end of the day, this family wouldn't trade their unique cottage for anything else. Well, if you'd asked me 12 years ago, would I ever have a yurt? I don't know that I even would have said yes. Um, now I have a yurt, and I actually can't really imagine living in any other space. It has become such a part of our summer. And, you know, it, it really is a magical place. And it really, it almost feels like a great big treehouse.
it's fun to live in a yurt. It really, really is. I never thought I'd say this, but yes, I am lucky to have a yurt. This family built their island retreat from the ground up with the good life in mind. There's two favorite things up here. One's the suds and the other one's the fishing. Okay, Alana, it's hammer time. Let's go fishing. Hi, I'm Jim. I'm Alana. And I'm Nancy. And, and this, this is, is our retreat. retreat. Welcome to The Last Resort, the name given to this unique octagon-shaped cottage and built by Jim and Nancy Swales. This island getaway was built in an area well known for freshwater fishing. There are people who like to fish, and then there is Jim. <laughs> Jim and Nancy's octagonal design allows for stunning 360-degree views from inside, but made construction very tricky. Believe me when I say this is our last resort, because we could never go through the struggles again of trying to reconstruct anything of this nature. When the build started 10 years ago, power was still not available on the island. So the entire thing had to be done by hand. Most of the construction was done by chainsaw. There was times that we didn't even think we were gonna make it as a couple. It was a chore, it was a nightmare, but it's a godsend now. Welcome to the last resort. All the wood that you see all came locally. Uh, these large timbers that uh, you can see go up as high as 32 feet in the air on the center post. Every log in the entire place was hand drawn uh, with a draw knife. Draw knifing is extremely labor intensive. It's essentially turning raw rough wood into usable lumber by hand. So who was stuck with that job? Myself and any crews that I could help or, you know, get over here to give us a hand and assist us. That probably in itself took a year. Back breaking, blood, sweat and tears, but it's very gratifying once it's all completed uh, and erected. The draw knife and log roller used to construct the majority of the cottage are now proudly displayed on the wall. They, they have found their home and hopefully they will never have to come off the wall again. Nothing during the construction of this retreat came easy. From the design, which Jim and Nancy did themselves, to the execution, setbacks were plenty, including the fireplace. The fireplace uh, was dragged up here in the wintertime, weighs about a thousand pounds. Unfortunately, it actually went through the ice just out in front of the cottage, uh, but with the help of friends, we were able to pull it up out of the water and created uh, a rather unique fireplace. Nancy's small touches are all over the cottage as well, including these custom hand-painted chairs. Obviously, we love fishing here, and you can see that with our theme, we've carried it on even to our chairs. We have old trout, we have small mouth, we have catfish hunter, one named right after Jim, Muskie Dundee. This is my chair right here. Even the kitchen got a taste of Nancy's creativity. And this is our kitchen, carrying on with the wood theme. My refrigerator, we clad it in wood and Alana and Jim found the handles and we put them on. Loved my fridge. And carrying on with the fish theme, can you see the fish in the backsplash? The fishing references in the cottage, and there are many, echo Jim's passion for the sport. But how big do the fish get in these waters? Jim and Nancy Swales spent 10 years building their fishing retreat with logs literally hand-hewn on site. Now that the work is done, it's high time to show it off. You want to see what it looks like upstairs? Let's take a look. Have you seen the upstairs yet? This is it. As you can see from the second floor level that I'm on right now, the entire place is an open concept. All the beams are interconnected onto this center pole with all the weight of the center pole holding the basic structure of the entire cottage up. We have two bedrooms here. One bedroom is for Nance and I, and, and my daughter has a second bedroom. Uh, we decided not to uh, build the walls right to the ceiling so that we uh, were able to look at the structure of the cottage. 
I want to lie in bed and look at all the work that I did. But now that the work is done, it's time to relax and enjoy their island retreat. There's two favorite things up here. One's the suds and the other one's the fishing. Okay, Alana, it's hammer time. Let's go, go fishing. fishing. If I went out in the morning, I would come back at sunset. <laughs> it's, it's nothing to go out and fish for eight, nine hours a day. This, right, what is happening right now happens a lot, very often. I catch more fish. Yeah, well, in your dreams. <laughs> the largest fish ever caught in these waters was a muskie that was 37 pounds, and I have it uh, mounted up on the wall, as you can see up there. Muskie Dundee, that's, who, that's where the name comes from. I love how relaxing fishing is. It's an escape from reality, for sure and spending time with my dad and it's just a great escape for sure. Kind of puts dinner on the table. Yeah, cheap dinner. <laughs> the most special thing about being up here is our privacy and being away from it all and relaxing and enjoying the view. Watching water is like watching a fireplace. You can't get enough of it. There was a lot of blood, sweat and tears when in it. I mean, we worked our butts off every single weekend and we're so thankful what we, we built what we did. I love every minute I spend up here. It's absolutely a dream come true for myself and both my parents. It's such a relaxing place surrounded by a loving family and I'm incredibly lucky. I love it.